return to 1014, please. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service this morning. Welcome to the graduate families. And just let me say, that first song didn't imply that you graduates were just little children. I think for me, as sitting there, one of the older persons in, uh, persons in the community right now, or at least in our church family, is that what it says is that Jesus is with you right from the time you're little singers and little babies right to through until you're graduates. And from then on into your future. So let's just open in prayer and then we'll do our announcements and the normal stuff that we do here in Cornerstone. Father, we thank you this morning that we can come together as a community. Father, thank you that we can celebrate with the families of the graduates here in Moss Bank. Father, our prayer with for them is that you would walk with them through these next six or eight weeks as they finish up high school and on into the future. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us this morning. In Christ's name, amen. Well, I was looking for something to share with you from Scripture. And, you know, it's hard to pick out just the perfect verse because it seems like if we take something, it maybe is not just applicable to our situation. But I came up with something from, from uh, Proverbs chapter 19. And it isn't just for the grads. I think it's good, it's good for us all to think about. Proverbs 19 and 20 says, Get all the advice and instruction you can. Uh, Leanne's probably shaking her head up and down. So you, and there's always a good thing when you're reading, reading scripture. Look for the word so or so that. Because it gives you an instant. Why is that so important? So that you will be wise the rest of your life. What a, what a great instruction. And parents, do not look at your kids. <laughs> Second part of that, uh, that little scripture, verse 20, and it is not saying that we shouldn't make plans. Plans are a good thing. It says you can make many plans, 
which are good, but remember that the Lord's plans will prevail over it all. So we look at our world today and we say, what's going on in our world today? He's got a plan, but you can be part of that plan. So that's what we're here to do this morning, is to celebrate together, to plan together for the, for the uh, graduates as they walk down the next few weeks and into their careers and into the futures, as we walk hand in hand with the parents of our community, as they watch those kids move into their, their area. And so that, today's focus is, is on the graduates. We're, we're really excited to have you here this morning. Thank you for coming. And perhaps there aren't some families aren't able to, to attend or something, but it's being live streamed, and so hopefully you can take part in that later on. So let's just uh, move into the, the normal stuff of, of this morning. Brad, what do you got up there? Okay, the coming events, of course, just lost it. So pardon me, here we are. There's uh, not too much changes from week to week, and I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, you can read, but just to highlight, Pastor Marty is taking some kids off to Strive next week at Pambrum, so he won't be here, and in his stead, our superintendent, Western Region Superintendent from Swift Current, Rob Cochran, is coming to share the word with us and that. And it is our last Sunday school for the season on next Sunday, and then the 5th of June, we're going to have our Sunday school picnic. So is there anything else that needs to be highlighted in the... Where's Chris, anything? I don't know. Anyone? Okay. That's good. All right. Brad, you're still going to do the song stuff after we'll do the prayer and praise section and as we go into that part of our... And again, this is sort of our normal situation. If you watched on, on Facebook or have attended lots in the past, this is the way we do things on Sunday mornings. And so, yes. I'd just like to yeah. announce two grads on June, Friday, yes. June 10th. And the public is definitely welcome to awesome. come to the service or the ceremony at 7 o'clock at the gym. Okay. There you go. So 7 o'clock, June 10, 10 yeah. at the school. Uh, if you want to attend or if you're part of the family, part of the community, it's open this year, and that's awesome. Yeah. So we get, as a community, to share in their, in their celebrations. And that's just only a couple of short weekends away. Yeah. So, is there any prayer items or praise items that you'd like to share this morning? Um, just, just off the top of your heads or something that's just burning a hole in your heart? We're not asking you to stand up and be part of that, but if, you, if there is something, we'd be glad to share that with our community and our I just want to take a moment, uh, I saw uh, Wendy here, we did speak with Ted Nagel and it's awesome to see Ted out and about, talking a little funny you might say, but I'm, think, I'm glad that he's talking in good spirits, so, so thanks uh, for people that's been praying for Ted over the last six to eight months as he's gone through quite a journey with, with cancer and stuff, so that's one prayer, a praise item that we might want to take part in. Yes, and something that didn't get into the bulletin this week, uh, Audrey Suter passed away this past week. I think she was 95 plus, 97. Yes, that's right, 97 just in March. So, yeah, she's, uh, she was in, in Prince Albert for six years. Prior to that, she spent 91 years in our community, I think. So, anyhow, yeah. And the, the celebration of life services this afternoon at 2 o'clock, and I think it's open at the hall. Bev? I also would like to mention that Larry's uncle, Willie, Willie Singel, hmm. who lived out of our way for yep. all those years, he passed away this week. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, Willie Singbill has been gone from the community for a long time. I think he was in Alberta, was he not? Yeah, so uh, he passed away just if you didn't hear that or were unable to, to, to hear it. So just be with the Singbill family at large. And, and you'll notice if the, the bulletin's up on the screen there that uh, Larry's mom, Doreen, is in a hospital and uh, she's been. Uh, diagnosed with cancer and a, few, and a few other things along with age and whatnot. So she's spending her time in the Gravelberg, Beth? Yeah. So just be in prayer for her and for the Singbill family as they continue on. Be in prayer for Pastor Marty and their family as they continue to minister here in Moss Bank and as they go to take the kids. What a, what a thing. 11 kids. Where's Marty? He's faded into this. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hiding. Yeah. 
Yeah, so 11 kids next weekend over at Pambram. Yeah, so just pray for them. There's going to be um, three um, people living in this background, so just for sure and then they, they learn a lot too and of course we continue for, to pray for Scott and Deb Anderson with their situation both of them have health situations and we pray that that they would uh, just face up with that and God would be with them nothing that you want to share then let's just take a moment to to share these things uh, I always like to give you a few seconds at the end just to think about and pray to God by on your own and that's that's fair and you can just do that and then we'll, we'll bring our music team up at the end of that so father we come to, to you this morning with grateful hearts um, we praise you for Ted Nagel's uh, beginning of recovery for him and we know that there's a, a road ahead yet but father we thank you that that he's uh, come along this far we continue to pray for his brother uh, Eldon as well as he's got health issues father we we pray for the Singbill family in uh, passing of Willie and and of course with Doreen being in the hospital we just lift that family up to you there's a lot of things going on there Father, for the Suter family and uh, and their and that Jim and Cal and their their uh, rest of their family, just be with them and give them comfort as they mourn the loss of their mom. Father, as we look into the coming days ahead of us, we thank you for graduates and graduations, and may you be honored this morning, and may they be encouraged as we uh, focus in on them. And so, Father, there's other things. We know the list is long and it continues on. And then we just come before you now just for a moment to, to uh, think about what's going on in our worlds. And, uh, and, Father, we thank you that you're already listening. And so for these things, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, look at that. That music team is awesome. So they're going to lead you into some music together, and then Marty's going to come, and uh, there's a little ser service or ceremony or whatever you want to call it just here this morning, and uh, enjoy the rest of the morning. Thanks, guys.
may be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. Within me, what, what are those lyrics? I didn't sing those ones at camp. That was just weird. I'm getting old, right? It's not the way in my day. Well, good morning, everyone. Look at you guys sitting in the front row. No one does that. You're my heroes. You're awesome. Thank you so much for coming. You too, Char. That's great. The yeah, rest of you, thanks for coming. Um, it's so wonderful to have you. Thank you uh, for coming in. It's such a, a pleasure to have the graduates with us and your, and your families and your, and your friends. I, I, I know it was probably like a big deal to come, right? I was your age once, last century, right? And I remember grad Sunday in my own church. And these were people I knew and I didn't even want to go, right? You're probably thinking, why do we have to go? Who are these people? They're probably strange. Well, we are. But I like to think in a good way. You know, we've had some people trickle in since, uh, since the service started, and they probably did that on purpose, because uh, I was one of them too. So before we get started, there's such as a wonderful group here. Why don't we just get up, turn to one another, shake each other's hands, welcome one another uh, into our service, and then, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes when you're done, we will continue with where we're going. Okay, so do that now. Front here waiting for handshakes. There we go. I was kidding about that 15 minutes, guys. Well, all right. We were, like I said, we're just so blessed to have the graduates with us. And uh, since um, everyone might not know who you are, we're going to have you come forward on the stage. And I'm going to have questions for you. So if you're graduating, it's not if you've graduated. S settle down, Aiden. Okay, so I'm just joking. I'm going to pay for that later. Anyway, why don't you come up forward, you graduates of the class of 2022. <laughs> Holy cow, it's like half the school. All right, why don't you just line up here? Okay. All right, now if you could just turn this way. No, I'm just kidding. Right? That kind of freaked me out. Anyway, it's our pleasure to have you uh, here this morning. And uh, normally on a grad Sunday, what I do is I just ask you some questions. Don't worry. They're not tough. No math, unless that's your thing. Uh, but it, it's this. Why don't you, you say your name just because, actually, why don't you come here? Okay. Right? And you go in between here. And Laura, you go here, and when you guys switch, I just, okay, and then, and then you guys, and I just, it was kind of like, it's kind of like evolution, right? And it ends in Simon. Okay, 
So anyway, where were we? Okay, so I'm just going to have you say your name and, uh, and just tell us uh, what you're looking forward most to graduating and if you have any immediate plans or things that you're pursuing in the future, if you would, you'd like to. You think you can remember those? Nope. Okay, that's okay. I got cue cards. All right, we'll start with Charlie. <laughs> Okay, you can take the room. Oh. You can take it, though. Okay, you're going to tell us who you are. My name's Charlie Good Peterson. Job. Okay, and what you're looking forward to most about graduating? Moving out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? There was an amen. <laughs> it sounded like a Kim. I don't know. It could be good. <laughs> Yeah, does she? Is there tears? <laughs> and, okay. and what, do you have any immediate plans or things that you would like, to, you're planning on doing in the future? Um, I'm going to Lakeland to be a vet tech. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you give like deals? I could, yeah. Good, because I got a dog. <laughs> All right, so now we're just going to pass it over. So name? Uh, um, Michelle Gonzalez. We all know, but just in case there's the one person that doesn't, what you're looking forward most to graduating? Also moving out. Yeah, you be moving out too? Or are you getting moving in with Charlie? You're going to have a pad? <laughs> no? Is that what the kids call it? Is that still hip? Do you have any, uh, any future? Oh, um, I'm going to the U of R for biology. Oh! Good. Yeah, I almost failed that. <laughs> awesome. All right. I'm Lara Skradoff. Uh, I am going to the University of Regina and studying psychology. And I'm looking forward to living with Michelle. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. <laughs> It only took me three years to say Lara's name right. I always called her Laura, a youth group, and then all the kids at once would say, Lara! Three years. All right. My name's Paige Vody. Um, I can't wait to leave home. <laughs> um, I haven't decided what school yet, but I'm hoping to go to Lakeland College for environmental sciences. Awesome. My name is Justin Byers. I plan on, when I'm done school, move out and <laughs> continue on working at uh, Co-op in town here and see where the future takes me, I guess. Awesome. What are you most excited about? I'm most excited about uh, uh, getting out of that school. Yeah. <laughs> Your principal is here. <laughs> um, I'm uh, Reed Hawkins. And, uh, okay, you got the first part. I, I, I even forgot, so don't feel bad. Uh, what you're looking forward to? Um... Getting out of the house, for sure. Okay. Getting as far away from home as I can. <laughs> this is so inspiring. Uh, and, and, and any immediate plans or future plans? No plans yet. Okay. You know what? Future's wide open. Exactly. A blank page. I feel a country song being written right now. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm Simon Berg, and... I'm staying in the community. Okay. I'm going to Moose Jaw to SAS Polytechnic to do construction. Cool. And what are you most excited about, Simon? Uh, staying and working in my home community. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, guys. Okay, we got some gifts for you. So, uh, let's see here. Huh? Only keys are in here. The cars are coming later. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you. You're welcome. Nope, 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 nope. I'm trying to do them in order. It's a great name. 
And page. Here you go. You're welcome. And all right. Justin. Nobody. The only Reed I've ever met. All right. Simon. Okay, this one's a little weird, but. Awesome. All right, there's one for Landon, but I'll just take it. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll get it to him. Now, chances are there's a Bible in there. And uh, uh, I encourage you that them are the words of life and that we love your lives. And so does God. And we're so thankful for, for who you guys are. And we thank you for... Um, your your journeys through uh, Moss Bank School, and we're excited to see uh, what you have planned in the future because it's going to be epic. All right, I'm going to pray for you. Is that okay? So this is going to happen. Is Simon, you're going to put your hand on Reed, and then I said, Reed, you're going to put on Justin, and then. COVID's over. We don't need to social distance anymore. See, it's going to be our line of prayer. See? All right. Hey, uh, Charlie. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for these lives. We thank you that each one of them, Father, was first, was first born in your imagination. They were your idea. You spoke them into being. You used, Lord, uh, the wonder of, of their mothers and fathers and their, their long histories, Lord, of, of families and life to bring them into this world. And Father, that you have been with them every day, every step, every breath, and we thank you that that's not going to change. We just pray special blessing on them. And that, Father, that you would speak to them and through them into the world. And may you glorify them, Father, as they glorify you. Just thank you for each and every one of them. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. The class of 2022. Thank you. Hey, look at Charlie. She was always a leader. You go. You follow Charlie. <laughs> Wonderful. But usually at this time, I, uh, I read the scripture that we'll be looking at, and uh, normally I have to read it, but uh, this morning is such a familiar one, I actually have it memorized, and there's a good chance that many of you have it memorized. Um, not like my friend Chiante, I, I took a class with her, I'm, I'm enrolled in the seminary at, at Karenport, doing that part-time, and she could either write a book on, a uh, paper on the book of Romans, which is 16 chapters, or memorize the whole thing, and she memorized the whole whole thing. Isn't that credible? Uh, I haven't. I wrote the paper. Um, but our verse today, John 3, 16, and if you know it, say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your presence here. We thank you, Lord, for um, the celebration of this morning, not only the celebration of you, uh, Lord, who is life and the author of life and the lover of our souls, but the celebration of, of next steps, the celebration of what is yet to come. Lord, the, the end of one uh, era and the beginning of another. So I pray, pray for my friends, Lord, that and graduating and pray for their families, Lord, as there is laughter, but it's a difficult time of seeing those that have been uh, under our roof and under our covering for so long move on into a world, uh, Lord, that's not always kind. And so we pray protection over them, and we pray that you would help us to trust you and to trust them 
that all the lessons, Lord, that have been learned, uh, Lord, through our teaching or, and through their, their instruction, Lord, as parents, Lord, uh, will be uh, produced in them as they step on, on their own and begin to live a life anew in a new way, but always, Lord, still under the covering of the love of their parents their families, their friends, and you. We pray for your uh, word, Lord, that it would go uh, forth from me in a way, Lord, that is heard in what you would have to say and not me. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning we're going to be discussing grace. And although the verse John 3.16, which we just read, actually doesn't have the word grace, is saturated in grace. Um, you cannot earn grace. Grace is unmerited favor. Let's look at the opposite of grace. You are graduating, some of you. And you are graduating, you will receive a diploma, but it won't be because of grace. It'll be because of hard work. You earned it. When you hold it in your hand, it's something that you have worked toward. And that's something to be celebrated. Your diploma does not come by grace. Mine, however, did. Um, I remember, oh my goodness, it was uh, a long time ago, 1994, in a galaxy far, far away, Melfort. And I was in high school, the Melfort and Unit Comprehensive Collegiate, say that 10 times fast, Mossbank School, easy peasy. Right? I was flunking biology. I was in trouble. Uh, all my friends, they were, they were set to graduate. Um, I, uh, I, I didn't know what I was going to do if, 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 if I, I wasn't going to graduate. I was already accepted at a post-secondary school. But there's one thing they required, a high school diploma. I said, well, who would get you if you were flunking biology? It was a Bible college. Uh, you just need money and a pulse and a diploma. So I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, I didn't know how I was going to explain it to my family. And I certainly did not want to be back in high school. Justin, I resonate with you, right? I didn't want to be back in high school where all my friends were living in dorm and having fun. So in order to graduate... I needed to ace my biology final. Long story short, it did not go well. The only question I knew for sure was my name on that exam. I was positive I flunked. It was a dark time, friends. I didn't know what to do, how I was going to explain myself. But then my report card comes, and get this, Marty Johnson, grade in biology, 50%. Boom! I passed. It was the bare minimum, but I passed. I was going to graduate. All my fears were gone. But the question remained, how? I looked at my report card and the little note, because there's those notes, right? And it said, a poor final lowered your final grade. Lowered my final grade? My grade was so low already that a world champion limbo person couldn't get under that. There's no way I should have got under that. How did I get 50%? Graduation night. Cap and gown, everybody happy, celebrations. I spot my biology teacher, and I looked at her, and my look said the same thing my heart was thinking. How? And all she did was wink at me, and I smiled. Well, she knew I wasn't going into the sciences, trust me. I graduated by grace unmerited favor. 
And like I said, although the verse that we, we, we've just read in John 3.16 is, the word grace is not there, but it is saturated in grace. It's a verse that is so well known, isn't it? In hearts, in minds, we see it on bumper stickers and t-shirts and, and painted on guys' faces at sporting events. It is the gospel, the good news in a nutshell. That, that's what a lady in my church growing up used to say. It's the whole gospel in a nutshell. One verse. It speaks of God bringing life where there was only death. Death for the guilty. Bringing life, light into darkness. Why? Because God so loved the world for God. I want you to imagine that there, there's a person that, that um, now this, this is just hypothetical, that, that spent their entire life in isolation, not around people or any form uh, of education. They're just in an island to themselves. And you have the chance to meet them. And you read to them this verse, for God so loved the world. And the question they ask you is this, who is God? How would you answer that question? In some ways, I, I think it'd actually be easier to answer that question to that person who has no understanding of God than people that are all around me all the time when I, I walk by them and when I'm getting my mail or uh, I'm on my way to get groceries or, or having a meal at, at the bent nail. It'd be easier to explain God to the person who's been isolated than, than people I know every day that have all these different ideas about God and misconceptions about God that they've developed over the years. Well, God is a, he's a really old man with a really long beard and he's far, far away and he sits on a throne. That's some people's view of God. Well, God is a, he's a moral monster. He's angry and he, and he hates people just like me. That's, that's some people's view of God. Some people think he's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> right? For me, the best way that God has been described, well, actually, it's my second favorite way, but it's from the Apostle John. Apostle John says this, God is love. God is love. Yeah, I know. He sounds like he's a hippie. But, you know, he was from the 60s. The original 60s. Zero, zero, six, zero. God is love. That doesn't mean that, that, that God um, loves or God is full of love. Both of these are true. But that God is love. He is the source of love. He is the definition of love. He embodies love. He is love. Love is both a noun and a verb. God is love and God does love. He always has. Because God, as we, we come to see through Jesus, is a community of love. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one. God is diversity and unity. No jealousy, no power play, no politics, just unity and love. One person put it this way, God is a party and you're invited. And you have been, and I have been, and anyone who ever lived has been. Because that's where we get to the world part. For God so loved the world. In the beginning, I know this one too, God created the heavens and the earth. Whose beginning? Our beginning. Creation's beginning. The universe's beginning. Not God's beginning. God had no beginning. Aristotle called God, or what he conceived as God, is the unmoved mover. The unmoved mover movers other things, but he 
himself is not moved by any prior action. God created, but God is not created. And all creation is God's beautiful, creative diversity on display. To me, this speaks of God. Everything in the universe that has come into being has a reason for its existence, right? Think about that. Bicycles, hot dogs, mountains, the seas, you and me. Everything that has come into being has a reason for its existence. Bicycles just don't pop into existence. You didn't just pop into existence. Your father met your mother, and there was a look, and a, how are you doing? And then there was you. Right? There's a reason for your existence. And our universe, our universe, science tells us what? Began. It was a big what? Bang. Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state that nearly 14 billion years ago has been started. Wait! A big bang! There was nothing! And when we think of nothing, we don't mean like an empty room. There was no empty room. There was no room. There was no darkness. There was nothing! Nothing! And then there was everything. And everything in our universe that comes into being has a reason for its existence. The universe has come into being and has reasons for its existence. It has a first cause, a first mover, and his name is God. He made all things, and then he made persons. He made us. He made humanity different than anything else that he created. He created us in his image, to bear his image. And he created us on purpose for a purpose. And that purpose was to know him as he would know us. And that we would love him as he loves us. And then partner with him to make an already good world better. Through what? Relationship to do things together. I love that, that God creates everything, and then he creates us in his image, and then he tells us to do what? Create. Go. Go. Fill the earth. Create as I have created. We're celebrating the life of you graduates who, in, in more than just your physical appearance, you bear the image of your parents. And you bear the image of God who created you. God loves the world. I don't know who's calling. <laughs> Maybe God's to say, I agree. God loves the world. He made it. The cosmos was first born in his imagination, and then he spoke it into being. He created all things, all things, and then he declared them to be good. To be good. He didn't say one thing wasn't good. Polka music and kale. No, I'm just kidding. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. He created us in community because God himself is community, and if we're created in his image, then we are communal. We are meant to have a relationship with one another. God created all things, and he declared it good. There is goodness. Your graduation is good. Your family and friends coming around you to celebrate with you is good. Spring is good. Babies are good. I, I made the poor little cry back there because he looked up at me, and it wasn't his dad, and it was a frightening experience for him. Right? But babies are good. Um... Spring is good. I don't know if I already said that. Uh, food is good. Amen? Sleeping in on Victoria Day is good. Root beer is good. There's so many good things. And in their own way, they speak of the goodness of God. 
when we look at the world and creation, we see the fingerprints of God everywhere. Yes, God is invisible in which we, we, we can't see him. He's like the wind. But there's evidence for him everywhere. Just like in the wind on a summer day when you, when you hang your sheets on a clothesline and you see them moved by the wind. You don't see the wind, but you see the evidence. What's there? So it is with God. And there's no greater image of God, no more um, evidence of God than those that you got up just moments ago and shook their hands and looked into their eyes. Us created in his image. The world was created good. And God loves it. What's interesting, you know, is that in, in John 3.16 here, that God so loved the world, is, is that the Greek word that John uses here... Um, for the word world is cosmos. It's cosmos with a K, though, not a, a C. And the weird thing about it is that it's a word translated world that John usually uses in a negative sense. Uh, for example, he says this in his letter, his epistle, 1 John 2.15. But do not love the world nor the things it offers, for when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Now, once again, when he says, don't love the world, he's not talking about the good things like the butterflies and spring and babies and root beers and all the things that we've talked about. But he's talking about in the way that this word is used in other letters, in particular by, by John, is to mean the world as in those uh, and, and people who, who have actually rebelled against God and rejected him. Those working against the ways of God, those working against the goodness of God, those who seek to bring darkness rather than light and destruction rather than life. And we know, all of us know, I don't have to prove this to anybody, that, that we live in a world with the good, but we also live in a world with things that are not good. Things like brokenness and suffering and injustice and violence and racism, pain. These are not good. These are the things that we long not to be real. Things like war and disease and depression and death. These are the things that we wish we long not to be. Which in its own way speaks to me also of God. Because in this world... Uh, there was a, a writer by the name of C.S. Lewis. I love his works. He wrote the Narnia books. Do you ever see that? Or the, the movies? You know, I think they made all of them, maybe a few of them. But he also was an incredible theologian. And he was just talking about when he looked at the world, that every, every longing he had, every desire he had in him, there was something in the world that could satisfy that desire. So if he was hungry, there's food, which you're all invited to a wonderful taco lunch afterwards, amen, which you're probably thinking about because it's getting close to noon. He talked about that if I'm thirsty, there is drink. If my desire is for companionship, there's relationship. But he said, what if there is within me something that exists that nothing in the world can satisfy? Perhaps I was created for another world. And that all of us, we have within us a desire for things to be different when we look at the brokenness of the world. We have in us a desire for the big questions, the whys. I have a beautiful dog, two cats. I didn't use beautiful for them on purpose. But I've never ever looked at them and saw them contemplating life. Why? Maybe why the cheap cat food and not the expensive cat food, but I've never seen them contemplate the whys of life, what their purpose is in the world. They know their purpose, to make me miserable. <laughs> All dogs go to heaven. That's it, right? <laughs> they don't know their purpose. They don't care because they have a purpose. It's ingrained in them. What's our purpose? Why do we live? Why do we breathe? Why do we do the things that we do? Ah, and friends, in a world that is so knowledgeable with so much information and so many ways to access it, I, I just see within us, we're still just as lost, looking for answers. 
even in our, our good things, even in our families, in our, in our, um, in our comforts and our blessings, I still wake up in the middle of the night with the questions that probe my mind and my heart. Why am I here? Why do I not feel right? Why does the world around me not feel right? So by using this word, this cosmos, God in this beautiful word, verse is saying that not all is right in the world that he loves. And you see, that's, that's what I love. It's just, it, it's easy to love a world that's full of butterflies and, and, and rainbows and, and, and waterfalls and, and, and kindness and, and, and goodness. But when it's broken and rebellious and, and we continue to see life on life violence and the degrading and, and selfishness and, and what have you, when we look at that, and knowing on all the brokenness, all the trouble, all the darkness, even in that, God loves the world. Why? Because he sees us. He sees his original tent. He sees the dream of us with him that he will not let go of. God created us to partner with him in a love, loving relationship. But here's the thing, love cannot be forced. It cannot be coerced. It cannot be manipulated. If it is, it is not love. I like to tell kids at camp the romantic story of how I asked Tina, my bride, to be my wife. I tell them that I took her down to this beautiful spot on the beach that I picked out. I asked her to marry me there, and I held her head under the water until she said yes. <laughs> and usually up until that point, the, the kids are like, oh, the girl is so romantic. And then you say that, what? Why? Because that's not romantic, that's homicidal. You don't do that. I was in a park, I got down on one knee. I said, I love you, will you partner with me? And she said yes. And here we are, 24 years later, two kids and a partridge in a pear tree. Right? God gave us life. He created us and he asked us to partner with us that he would be our life, that he would be our love, that he would be our joy, that he would be our identity, that he would be our self-worth. And we rejected him. We, it's not me pointing, what's the old saying? You point a finger somewhere, three more pointing at you and the thumb just, well, it's, it's Switzerland. It doesn't count. It's not taking a side, right? That that we rejected him. And once we stepped out under the cover of all that, we realized we were naked, right? And we hid. We hid from him, we hid from one another. And when he called out to us, rather than coming to him and saying, heal us, we blamed one another. And that's what we've been doing ever since, hiding and blaming, hiding and blaming. Whenever there's wrongdoing, hiding and blame. We rebelled. We ran from him. But here's the gospel. This is why it's good news. Because we ran from God, but he pursued us. He came to us. He reached out to us in love to come for us. And no more than when he became one of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. I mentioned earlier that God is love is my second favorite definition of God. Let me say my first. Jesus. Jesus is, as the scripture says, the visible image of the unseen God. The Son of God. God. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. He came near. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was created in the womb of the Virgin Mary. He was born and he grew up just like us. You know, Justin, you were talking about being in school, like, oh, I can't wait to get out of here. Do you know what God knows it's like to be in school and go, oh, I can't wait to get out of here? He became like us. But he also, oh, I love it here. <laughs> I had to do that, Leanne. We're on the SCC together. Um, right? That, that God came near. He showed us the face 
of God. He grew up like us in every way. 100% God. He, he performed miraculous works. He was empowered by the Father through the Holy Spirit. He, he reflected the, the, the face of God, but he was also 100% human. He was us. He showed us what humanity is meant to look like, perfectly reflecting God, completely trusting, completely faithful. He knew our joys and our pain, our laughter and our tears. He was rejected. He was lied to. He was lied about. He was abandoned. He was tortured on a cross, crucified for crimes that he was innocent of. He was like us in every way, but he was different in one way, unlike us. He never brought shame upon himself. He never brought shame upon another person. He never brought shame upon God. Jesus was not a superman. He was a sinless man. And he took human life. And he died a human death for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish. God is the author of life, the source of life. And when we've sought life in ourselves or others or the things of this world, it never measured up. It couldn't fulfill the mandate. We died first in person, I mean, sorry, first in spirit and then in body. But that's why God became one of us. For only as flesh and blood could he die, and we were flesh and blood. He became flesh and blood. He took all our brokenness, all our sin, all that shamed us, all that was killing us, and he took it upon himself on a cross. And then God defeated all that brokenness, all that sin, all that evil in the flesh of Jesus. And when he died, its power and its guilt and our shame died with him. Three days later, he rose victorious from the dead over sin and evil and death. And by faith, we can receive life in him. It's interesting, um, I've already been talking about how the word uh, cosmos is translated from Greek into in to English. We're all aware that the Bible was not written in English. It was written in Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic. And there's people uh, that go all over the world and they, they uh, translate the Bible in their own language. And one of these organizations are called Wycliffe Bible Translators. And there's this story of this one uh, missionary, this one Wycliffe Bible Translator who was working among a people he dearly loved. And he was translating the Bible into their language. And he came to the verse today, John 3, 16, and he was in a pickle, because it says, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, but the question is, they didn't have a word in their dialect for believe, how can you share the truth of this passage without the word believe, and so he prayed out to God, and he was sitting at his desk, and he, and he leaned back in his chair, and he just said, God, please give me the answer. And as soon as he leaned back in his chair, God gave him the answer. There was a word that he could use. And he was experiencing it at that moment. This is how he translated. For God so loved the world that he gave his, only one, his one and only son, that whoever believes, he translated, whoever puts their whole weight on him just like he was putting his whole weight on that chair, will not perish but have eternal life. That's what it means to believe in God. We put our whole weight in him. It's more than just believing there is a God, right? And knowing there's a God is one thing. Like, for example, I, I know there's a, a Connor McDavid. I don't know him just as much as Isaac would love me to. I don't know him, right? But I know my wife. I know you, to know God, to know who he is, to have his heart, to have his spirit, to love him and to trust him, to have a relationship with him. How can you have a relationship with an invisible God? Well, you like have a relationship with anybody. You speak, you listen, you trust. Um, Tina and I are sometimes apart just because I'd need to go on a trip or she knows to go on a trip. And it's interesting that even though I'm away, she's still with me. We haven't ceased to be married. 
When I'm thinking about buying something, should I buy this? There's a voice in the back of my head. No. Right? But the thing is, with, with God, it's different. He is with me in the person of his son, Jesus, through his Holy Spirit. He's with me at all times. And he desires that my whole life would be put on him because he can take it and he wants it to transform my whole life from the inside out. Trust me, friends, I'm a lot of work. But he loves me and he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What is eternal life? You know, when I was a kid, I didn't drink coffee. When I was a kid, I used to think eternal life was just simply life that never ends, right? The quest for eternal life, the holy grail, you know? You ever see that? You know, the chance to live forever. Is that what Jesus is talking about? I'm an experiment. Ricky, can I pick on you? Come on up here. Ricky's a brave girl. Let's hear it for Ricky. I'm not going to ask you to tell your name because you already said it, Ricky. But why don't you tell us how old you are? Okay. You're 12. Okay. We're going to go through an experiment today. We're going to go time traveling. Do you like that? So I'm no longer Marty Johnson. I am Marty McFly. And we are going into the future. We are going to go 80 years into the future. So you will no longer be 12. You'll be what? Not born. No, no. We're going to the future. Oh, okay. So how old will you be in 80 years? <laughs> Come on, I trust you. What's 80 plus 12? Okay, we need to pray for this one, right? right? You'll be 92, right? Do you think you'll look different? Let's see. Okay, I brought some stuff here today. All righty. Oh, I get it. <laughs> see, I don't even want to use this, but I will. Cool, it has brakes. Okay, you're 92. Okay, so let's, let's get rid of those glasses. We gotta get much thicker ones here. There we go. That, that's, can't, well, that's okay, and the reason you can't see is because you're blind as a bat. But we're gonna get there. This is your shawl. One of these days you don't know why, but you're gonna wake up and say, I need one of these. So, right, so that's you, and then this is your scarf. Some people call it a babushka, right? We're gonna put it on because you're a little cold, and, and uh, let's see, you got nice, beautiful hair, but one day it'll look like this. Okay, so this is, there we go. There we go. Okay, no, you're standing entirely way too straight. You had to bend her over a little bit there. You're really big. Yeah? Okay. There you go. Now give us your best 92 year old voice. Say hello. All right. Perfect. And it's going to be at that volume too. Did you sleep well last night? No. You didn't sleep well? Okay. Probably because you stayed up late watching movies or something, right? Let's imagine you're 92. And you didn't sleep well last night. But it's not because you stayed up watching movie. It's because of your sciatica. <laughs> Do you know what sciatica is? You have this nerve that runs from the top into your lower regions. And because you had both your hips replaced, it's pinching your sciatica. So every time you lay down, it hurts. So you get up, but you can't sit because your memory is so bad that you forgot to take your fiber pills. <laughs> and now you are so constipated <laughs> that it fired your hemorrhoids. <laughs> and fired is an appropriate term. And so you can't sit, but you can't get any preparation H because you can't drive, because they took away your license, because you're blind as a bat. And on the day they took it away, you were driving home and you ran over your neighbor's cat. So you have to wait till your kids come and visit you on Tuesday to get some relief. So here we are, Ricky. You're 92, you're tired. You can't see worth anything. You're deaf. You're deaf! <laughs> You're tired because you can't lay down. Because it hurts. And you can't sit down. Hemorrhoids. 
you're a mess, aren't you? Now someone comes into the room and says, good news. This day's going to last forever. <laughs> Is that good news? I don't think so. Let's hear it for real. Here you go. Yeah, you. I'd give you the walker, but I took it from a lady who's really going to need it later. <laughs> Eternal life is not life just lasting forever. Because what if your life is one right now of pain and you have suffering or loss or depression and the thought of that lasting another day, letting alone for an eternity, does not bring hope. Eternal life, Jesus said. This is eternal life, that they would know you, God. And, and the Jesus that you sent, the Christ you sent, eternal life is the life that you want, your full life, the life that is meant for you, and that just happens to last forever. It is a life where... You know love, and you know the life that is truly life. And your identity and your self-worth isn't based on what you do, or what you look like, what you do for a living, the color of your skin, your talents, your intelligence, your, your physical ability. None of that is not determined on your social economic status, what family you come from, how much money you have. Your life, who you are, is based on the God whose image you are made in and whose image is being restored from a place of brokenness to a place of wholeness through his son Jesus Christ and then one day when he comes again you will stand in him in glory in a new heaven and a new earth on a new body that is in perfect harmony with the work that he's done in your heart and you'll be in the right place at the right time forever and that is eternal life. But here's the thing, friends. Eternal life doesn't begin in some day in the future. For in the Gospel of John, in which we just read, the, the Gospel writer tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so they may be seen plainly. No shame, no hiding. That what they have done has been done in the sight of God. God will condemn, but it's not God wanting to condemn people. God is condemning darkness. Come out into the light, because that is where he has created you to be. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. I thank you for all my friends here today. I thank you for their, their coming and their, and their willingness, Lord, to um, uh, allow us to just to, to, to love on them and celebrate with them. Oh, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that as, as we go from this place, if, if it doesn't matter if, if we've sat in these chairs our entire lives or maybe this is the first time that we've ever sat, Lord, in these chairs, regardless, Lord, that as we leave this building, the one thing we know, the one thing that we take with us is that you love the world and that you love us and that you desire for us to know you and thus life eternally. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. They do that when I pray. It freaks me out every single time. <laughs> if you can grab your hymnals and open to 179.
we just ask that, that you would go in grace and that you would be gracious to one another.